Hello, welcome to uh, part nine of the contemplations on the Ashtavakra Gita. Um, I guess you probably guessed by now they're not all about contemplations on the Ashtavakra Gita. The Ashtavakra Gita is a spiritual text which kind of can have many depths of um, knowledge, I guess, within it. Um, when you meditate upon it, depending on you know, at some level what you're looking for. Um, it can work in, in different layers within your mental, emotional and spiritual psyches, if you want to call them that. Um, we're on lesson 12 today, which is all about abiding in the self. And when I say the word self, um, I mean in, in very simplistic terms, there's kind of two selves, okay? There's the little self, which is the kind of subjective, egotistical I that at some level we kind of define ourselves and identify with um, in this hologram of separation, in this maya of separation. And there's the self with the capital S, the big self, which, you know, is defined in many different ways in different traditions. Um, but I like to think of the big self as your inner, higher self, your kind of your inner. I mean, Jesus Christ talks about the father, right? Your inner father, your inner wisdom, um, which is linked to at some level, if you want to call it the source, the source of everything. All right. The absolute truth. And this, this higher self, this self with a capital S, um, is at some level what we, what we try to allow through us to govern, I don't know, is that the right word? I don't know, maybe, maybe it is, yeah, govern our lives rather than the little self, okay? The little self, um, it's almost like the child that's, trying to grow up a little bit and and sometimes it needs some of that guidance from the higher self you know different traditions you know in certain um native american traditions you know they talk about eagle the eagle consciousness or condor consciousness or whatever you want to call it really a big bird of prey that can fly really high um and see the bigger picture okay versus you know the the insect or the snake kind of consciousness the f the flat bellied ones that have to kind of weave their way through the grass and most of the time can't see the so I can't see the grass for the field yeah I can't see the wood for the trees um and and we exist simultaneously within within all these levels but where we choose at some level to place our attention and consciousness where we choose to focus our attention and our energy and our um, intention that will essentially give us the perspective um, or rather it will give us different perspectives depending on 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 where we're at where where our consciousness is either um, intentionally trapped in or unintentionally trapped in okay because most most of our consciousness if, if 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 the whole piece of the pie of our consciousness is a hundred percent you know a lot of it's bottled up yeah in in what the buddhists call various samskaras um desirous natures i like to think of them as um little lamps like uh aladdin had to rub to free the genie yeah so all these lamps that, that are full of our consciousness, right? you got to kind of tease the consciousness out, rub the lamp, let the genie free, it'll grant you wishes, right? And these lamps can be multiple things, yeah? They can be attachments, they can be belief systems, it could be most of the time it's our conditioning, you know, how we're programmed from, from the point of, of birth within a, you know, a human body, Um and yeah, how we're conditioned and programmed really does <coughs> trap our consciousness and the current situation on the planet um, 
you know, is a classic example of how of how we at some level are getting programmed. Um, certain um, psychological experts say that it takes thirty days to form a subconscious habit if you do it regularly. Okay. Um, I'll give you an example. My partner Wendy and I have been doing a mantra for um, just over thirty days now. We're going to, we're doing a hundred and twenty day mantra practice, and it's quite a complicated mantra. I won't go into the details of it. It's on the Facebook page. Um, but for the first three or four days of reciting this mantra, we had to learn it. Okay, so so we were we were reading it as we were reciting it and going through our 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 mantra practice. And only after about maybe 10 days did it start to really flow more. And now it's like, wow, you know, it's just coming out really easily. And it's in Sanskrit. And I don't know Sanskrit, okay? Um, so we've had to learn a bit of Sanskrit. We've had to kind of really engage in the mantra, understand it and, and feel it and, and work with it. But again, after 30, just over 30 days of doing the practice, it's become a really, it's become automatic, okay? Um... And I suppose at some level, you know, this isn't just about talking about Ashtavakra Gita, isn't about just talking about spirituality. I mean, I, I'm slightly concerned, really, that, 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 that we're being programmed at the moment, okay? And, you know, even this whole social distancing thing, whatever your belief system is on it, whether, whether you believe that we should be doing it or not, you know, we've been doing it for about 30 days now. And I go to the shops, I go and see my mother, um, I, 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 we walk around the place and people are scared. They walk past you, you know, some of them look at you nice, some of them don't look at you so nice. Some are doing it out of fear, some are doing it out of courtesy, but it's becoming a habit, you know, and... My concern is that whenever certain restrictions are lifted, that habit is going to stay in people. And if it stays in people, we're going to be living in a different world. It's going to take effort to deprogram yourself from essentially being locked away. All right. Now, many of you who've worked with me know that I've been locked away for a little while in my life. Okay. And... There's this thing called institutionalization, uh, which a lot of people talk about. And ultimately, institutionalization is really about being rigidly controlled into a routine, a structure um, and um, at some level, a boundary system, which you get so used to after a while that anything beyond that is very difficult to manage for your psyche. So as we start to come out of these restrictions, and I'm feeling, I'm feeling that it's, not, it's going to be sooner rather than later, all right, for a number of reasons, which I might go into in another video. But as we come out of these restrictions, these, these, these heavier boundaries that at some level, whether you like it or not, whether you agree with it or not, We've allowed ourselves to be forced into, okay? Everyone has a choice. And I've spoken before about force and power, yeah? You know, the police, people people in power, supposed power, they're not in power, they're in force. And there's a difference. No one can tell you what to do. It's your choice. Whatever you want to do, you can do. There is free will in this universe, but if someone wants to impose their will over you, they need force, right? And it tends to be the more organized ones that are better at, you know, imposing their will over you. Um, so, you know, I might I might sound a bit, a bit off the wall here, but I think it needs to be said that just please, A, be aware of your current lifestyle and patterning and thinking processes because when we're all let out to play again it ain't going to feel the same it's going to take a while to get used to it all right 
Um, and like I said, there's, there are lots of beautiful, professional, amazing people out there, healers, whatnot, including myself, my teacher, Jane Kestrel at the Bridget Healing Centre, Wendy Vickery, my lovely partner, all these people, right? And more and more and more and more. And I want to say everyone's names on this video, okay? But I can't, all right? So if you want to um, tag yourselves on Facebook or whatever, then please do so, all right? These people, these holistic, beautiful, conscious, aware people are there to help you get through situations like this, okay? Because um, there is nothing to be afraid of, really. And, you know, obviously after all this, if you're struggling a little bit, just get in contact. Get in contact with whoever you feel resonates for you to help you through the transition processes that we are going through at the moment. Um, because there, there might be a need for that. Um, and it's, 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 you're in your power if you're asking for help. You really are. Okay, I'm not just saying that. You are in your power if you are humble enough to ask for help and guidance. Um, so the other thing I briefly wanted to touch on today before I go, we go for our walk, um, is, um, the concept of evil. All right. And, you know, I've been thinking about, you know, how do I talk about evil? Cause you know, do I really get into the nitty gritty of evil spirits and, 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 and other realms and, 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 and entities that, that at some level exist? in and amongst us that like to try and manipulate our energy and create certain scenarios in our lives to, I suppose, hold some kind of energy vibration for them. I could talk about that. You'll probably think I'm a bit bonkers if you're not into this stuff. Um, don't really care. <laughs> it's my job, all right? So part of the shamanic work is is you know to be very aware and, and actually work with a lot of these entities a lot of people think you know oh, evil's bad and 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 you know angels are good and demons are bad and all this kind of stuff you know they're pretty much the same yeah um but just they they're just they're just working for different different forces different 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 powers different 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 folks for different strokes right and it's important to understand that 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 if you're working with spirit, with a capital S, or with spirits, little s, plural, pluralized, individualized, okay, you have to treat them at some level with a bit of cognizance and respect, just like you like to be treated with respect, just like you try, like to be treated in a certain way. These, um, let's call them evil spirits, um, at some level are evil because... A, they want to be, B, they get a kick out of it, or C, they are so ignorant that they haven't been educated properly. So either way, they are choosing to do things, all right? And we won't go into the nitty gritty of, of, of what's going on at the moment on this planet, because at some level, it's, it ain't like science, all right? I can't prove this to you, all right? But I want you to feel into your intuition a little bit. But a lot of really good... Beautiful people, okay, um, including my mother today, right, have said to me in the course of this thing, oh, all this stuff that's going on out there about trying to, you know, make us more subjugated, trying to enforce vaccines on us, trying to enforce microchips on us, trying to control us more, trying to digitize us, trying to take our power away, trying to create dystopian realities for us. They wouldn't do that. The governments wouldn't do that. You know, people wouldn't do that. You know, this is this is great. You know, save our NHS and 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 and, and clap every Friday. Let's let's all we're all in it together. Yes, we are all in it together. Okay, but each of us has has a, the ability to think for themselves. Okay, and I'll tell you one thing. You know. Either consciously, more recently, or unconsciously in the past, I have I have worked with and have suffered from evil, okay? And it's not nice. And whatever agenda, if there is an agenda going on out there, yes, they want harm to be done, okay? Evil spirits get a kick 
out of you suffering. They get a kick out of conning you. They get a kick out of causing pain in you. They get a kick out of suppressing you. They get a kick out of stealing your power. They get a kick out of anything that they feel they can steal energy from you in, 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 in whatever way, shape or form. And it's a bit like, you know, if you're watching a, a feel good film, you know, you feel good when there's a nice happy ending, right? They feel good when there's no happy ending. They feel good when everyone's dead on the floor, beating, bleeding from their noses <laughs> or, or more, you know, horrifically from other orifices. Um, they get a kick from horror and terror. All right. And as much as these, my friends and family and, and people I know like to say, oh, no, you know, we trust this and we trust that. You can't trust evil spirits. You can't trust evil people, you know. Many evil people have evil spirits working through them, okay, depending on at some level where our own egoic vulnerabilities are, these, let's call them spirits, will attach into that and manipulate that. So where there's a weakness in you, that will be manipulated, okay. So for example, you know, this this whole kind of being proud of our NHS, being proud of clapping on a Friday, being proud of wearing a uniform in Tesco's and your and your and your face shield, which makes you look like a riot officer, right? I'm protecting. You know, I'm proud. I'm proud. Pride is extremely egotistical. Okay, pride has no sense of 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 at some level. Um, or rather, pride reinforces that little self, that little I. Yeah? We all live very active Facebook lifestyles, very narcissistic at times, where we're kind of posting every five minutes. And, again, proud. You know, we're all proud all the time. But pride is of the ego. Okay? Pride gives no allowance for humility. And pride can be manipulated. It can be manipulated. Okay. I saw a sign outside the co-op today saying, or the, yesterday, whatever it was, saying, be a local hero. Stand two metres apart. Yeah. Now, I don't think I've read in any scientific journal that, that a virus can jump two metres. <laughs> All right. Tiny little... Little particles of dead protein and a little bit of, bit of DNA in it are just going to... Whoo, look, there's someone over there. Let's go jump from this person to that person. Hee <laughs> No. <laughs> Be a local hero. When you see, when I say the word hero, it makes you feel proud. Doesn't mean I can be a hero. I can be a local hero. I'm going to stand two metres apart. <laughs> Great. Where's my fucking badge? You know, where's my medal? Yeah. And, you know, again, not not telling you how to think, not telling you to agree with me. I'm not trying to push an agenda here. I'm just speaking my truth, right? And my truth might might be utter bullshit for you, in which case just turn me off, okay? I'm not getting anything from this, so... <laughs> but if it does resonate a little bit, just be aware about how you, your pride can be manipulated, yeah? How we can rally behind... A so-called cause, yeah, like our NHS, and use that cause, you know, our pride in that cause to, at some level, um, make us, not necessarily make us, or, or give us the opportunity to choose certain actions and make certain agreements without knowing all the facts, Yeah. Pride is, you know, creates certain types of emotions in us that temporarily make us feel really good. Yeah. When I got my degree certificate and my, my karate black belt, all this kind of stuff. Yeah, I felt great for a quite a short space of time. Probably not even longer than hours, right? And then and then you're back to normal again, aren't you? Then you're back to normal everyday mundane life. So that feeling of pride gives you that adrenaline buzz for a little bit. Right, and then it goes away again, and then you've got to find something else to feel proud of. All right, and again, it's all temporary, temporary shit, man. You know that's what this these teachings are all about. 
It's about tr it's about transitioning from the temporary into the eternal, into the ever present. And when you're in the temporary, when you get when you're playing the fairground, when you're Pinocchio eating the ice cream, stuffing your face full of candy floss, doing the rides, and the fairground operator, the evil fairground operator, right? wants you to keep doing that because you're feeding that fairground and eventually you become a donkey and then you're the one pulling the rides yeah then you're the one pulling pulling the new recruits <laughs> okay so just just be aware of where your own ego at some level which needs these feelings of of identity are creating choices or creating um, certain physiological, psychological, sp even spirit, and call it spiritual because it's unseen, um, thought processes and emotions in you which may bend you a certain way in terms of your choices and your preferences. Yeah? It's like that snake in the grass. Yeah? Start to fly a little bit higher and look at the bigger picture. Look at the real numbers. Yeah. So far be it from me to tell anyone what choices they make in their lives. You know, this is not about that, but it's about us at some level. The reason I'm doing some of these videos is is to give a slightly different perspective and just to help people kind of, you know, at some levels, it's OK to question. Right. Don't feel guilty about the status, uh, you know, questioning the status quo. And for goodness sake, never let anyone shame or guilt you into not speaking your truth or doing something that you feel is right for you, as long as you're prepared to take the consequences for it. Okay? If you're prepared to take the consequences for your choices and take full responsibility, go for your life. Okay? If people try to impose their will over you through guilt, through shame, through snitching, through all these kinds of things that are actually quite horrific, really, I see them a lot working in the prison, you know, on the prison wings. It's, it happens all the time. Oh, and by the way, you know, if 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 you're if you might be questioning, oh, you know, how, what does he know about evil? I've worked with some really evil people. Yeah, I work in prisons. You, you meet some very interesting characters there, and evil knows no bounds. You think at some level in our normal day-to-day -day life you know you 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 meet evil on a, on a fairly regular basis at times you haven't really met evil okay there's depths of evil that that at some level I've, I've at times have had to work with <laughs> normally to get myself out of a tricky spot um but you don't want to be you don't want to be involved in that but you want to be aware of it you want to be aware right that it exists and you want to be aware that at some level right it doesn't give a shit about you it really doesn't care about you at all all right it just wants your soul it wants your energy it wants to feed off you so look around you look at this world Yes, there are people out there that are evil and they don't care about you. All right. So so don't think just because you sit in front of a of a square or rectangular black box every day that feeds you a certain rhetoric that that is necessarily the truth. OK. If I locked you away from your point of birth for. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, first 12 years of your life, say, and just told you certain things, okay? Showed you certain things, didn't allow you to see the bigger picture, didn't allow you to see beyond your windows, you know? Just put you in a, in a, in a, in a, in a shuttered house for 12 years of your life and just programmed you a certain way. Of course, that's what you would believe your reality to be, Right? I've just put you in a really small fucking box, yeah? And I'm in a slightly bigger box, so I can see your box, but you can't see my box, right? That's how I get to control you. That's how I get to look, right, at what I want from you 
and make you believe certain things. All right. So not that I want to do that, but I'm just saying that's how certain evil progenitors of evil work. And there are, there, there are individuals on this planet that do that. Yeah. So be aware of that. Be awake to that. Don't be in fear of it because ultimately knowledge, love and truth breaks down all that stuff. They hate, you know, evil spirits hate being exposed. They don't like me that much, you know. <laughs> I'm like the Edward Snowden whistleblower. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, yeah, so TV, television, yeah. Classic way of programming. If all you're doing is locked away in your house looking at that thing, right, the TV, and, and watching that stuff being pumped at you on, a, on, on an hour-by-hour hour basis, subconsciously after 30 days, that's all you're going to fucking believe. I guarantee it. Because <laughs> you've, not, you've, not, you've not put your head out and gone, eh? actually, is this real? Is this true? You know, where are these numbers really coming from? Um, have you spoken to people about it? And it might, do you know what? might all be true yeah we might all die of covid all right i don't believe that i don't believe that at all but hey ho that's my choice all right you you can believe whatever you want so lesson number what are we on number 12 abiding in the self with the capital s and janaka said Becoming first intolerant of action, then of excessive speech. Hmm, <laughs> I might need to learn that one. Then of thought itself, I come to be here. Neither sounds nor other sense perceptions attract my attention. Even the self, with a capital S, is unperceived. The mind is free, undistracted, one-pointed. I am here. Effort is required to concentrate a distracted mind, superimposed with illusion. Seeing this, I remain here. Nothing to reject, nothing to accept. No joy, no sorrow. I am forever here. The four stages of life. Life without stages. Meditation. Renunciation objects of mind, nothing but distractions. I am content to be here. Doing and not doing both arise from ignorance. I choose to remain here. Thinking of the unthinkable one unavoidably conjures thought. I choose no thought and delight in here. Blessed is he who attains this by effort. Blessed is he who is such by nature. There we are. Abiding in the self. Abiding in that gap. Maybe that gap between thoughts. So, a lot of thinking to be done as we navigate our lives, but also a lot of awareness to be gained that ultimately it's a passing show um and so yeah just just be well yeah be healthy be happy live live free even if you're stuck in your doors in indoors you know that can be free that can be free yeah and if you're not sure what the hell's going on, that's okay too. All right. I don't think anywhere, any of us really know what's going on most of the time. Um, so it's okay not knowing. Um, but just be aware of yourself. Be aware of the bigger picture. And take things step by step, moment by moment, bead by bead, little moments. Yeah. Little moments of life where we can just be here, be present, enjoy just being in the body, if that's all it takes for now. See you next time.